So Fusix versus Rio. Wow. I'm not, I'm not going to predict anymore because when I predict, Rio loses. I'm going to predict. I've seen this multiple times. Between like, these players. Too many, too many times to count. Uh, before MVG was a thing, when MVG came, this was like every grand finals, like our every semi, like losers finals. This was, these guys faced off plenty of times. And for a moment there, like Fusix had his number. And that's what you expect from Sheik, especially against Ike and Ike, the old school Ike, without his buffs, without his convergence. But now was a, Ike was a bad time back then. Yeah, Those it, were it, dark times. But he still played him. That that just shows how loyal Rio is to this character, and, and that, that shows why he's here. Like how is, how how is what, it paid off? What? Fusix just set things to the D-pad. Yeah, he does that. He does the perfect pivot to the. I think he his up upward directional bat. He sets it as shield. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you perfect pivot to upper D pad chill, but what? Pass me the pass me the plaque real quick. All right, there you go. So <laughs> this is the uh, beautiful first place prize. We still have it in the casing right now. Gatorland 2017 tournament champion. <laughs> you got to give it the shine. <laughs> this is nice though. It comes it comes with the attachment sets already too. It's looking good. I'm gonna. I mean, gonna, I don't know gonna, people really can't. You, you, you can keep that. I'm pretty sure they're worried about the $400 power. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, like. for real. <laughs> we're, about, we're about the money here today. All about it. All right. And so this is, as you say, a throwback of sorts. Corrin versus Sheik. No, no like, man. No, no like. like. Go Corrin. Um, I, I guess today he kind of feels more comfortable. We saw it against Brand, like him kind of getting back into the swing of things, although he did lose. His Corrin looked a lot more comfortable than his Ike did. If I remember correctly, I believe there was a Corrin that actually has this as a Pretty bad matchup. Maybe for, Cosmos? For Corrin. Potentially. I'll, I'll have to look real quick. Because, uh, yeah. This is, uh, to my knowledge, not a great time for Corrin. But, you know, Rio obviously keeping this very close already. And at this point, it's like whatever you feel comfortable in. You're, you're in losers. You cannot take that chance that you did with I kind of going down two set, well, two games, and then try to go switch, make the switch. Why not make the switch at first and then go to where, what you're comfortable with if you have to. Use it, no stranger to utilizing that fair or spacing, but the convergence is something I, I like to like kind of point out when I think of using His ability to like confirm into the up smash, beautiful. Very knowledgeable player. All right, so I feel I have Cosmos' uh, chart in front of me from April of last year, so never mind. That's irrelevant. Things have changed quite a bit since then. But, uh, yeah, at that point, had it as a 55-45. 55-45? Oh, so, and I don't remember if April of last year was pre- or post-patch for Corrin. Obviously, to make things worse. Exactly. But uh, wow, Rio not really giving too much of a concern to that Dragon Fang shot from center stage enough to do it. Definitely not going to be able to survive that. I believe Sheik sh sitting at 82 units. Not going to be able to live that even across the stage. Wow, the landing fair into the bounce stage, but it's not going to be enough. And that's what, she, that's what, that's what she's going to struggle. Her ability to get kills as opposed to Corrin, but uh, wow. All right. Uh, no tech. Kind of no like, like it, it's, Obviously, you see Needles lead into death quite a bit, but not when you expect Needles to. Um, Stage fight. No, not at all. Rio trying to fight his way back on stage, but music maintaining center stage control. Wow, uh, just the strings already, these fares all the way back across the stage immediately. One hit confirmed was all it took. Right, but 82%. Wow, that pivot grab. Once again, just the fares all the way across, but it's not leading to the damage that he needs. This, however, this 82. Go deep. Like the recovery there from Rio. Gets this hit, but not enough. Vanish. Vanish, no, not, not even close. But he's building this damage, and that's what matters. Oh, we live in best <laughs> DI there. And the double poof. Trying to space it out. I'm, I'm trying to predict the uh, maybe an auto pin, but no, just a grab. Jab, jab. Yo, you cannot dodge. jab on my shield. Jab, like jab. Maria said, "You're not gonna spot dots twice." Wow. All right. Shout out to the camera work from uh, GX2 over there. GX Fire. GX Fire. Oh, you're right. The other one's here. My bad. So many GXs, man. <laughs> GX2 Too many. Is actually MC right now. My, my B. <laughs> my B. 
All right. I need, I need my boy to comb his head right now. <laughs> Tighten up. Rio is looking real woolly right now. But not as far as his gameplay. Like we said, like I said before, his corner looking a lot more comfortable. Did you see him go for the second uh, footstool there? He uh, footstooled him once and was like, hey, I'm going to do it again. Not I'm quite close enough to punish that Dragon Fang connection. And that's something I feel like they took away that they shouldn't have for Corrin, her speed. Because back in the day, she would have been able to kind of run up and get that. I'm, I mean, I'm happy that Corrin is slower, but I feel like Corrin means around the world also feel like that should have been something that really, really hurt a character. I'm not seeing a ton of emotion for either player right now. Just very, very strong faces. Fully focused on what's moving ahead of them. And the oh, up air. Wow. That, that converts like that. Oh, up smash? No. Going for the neutral. Not going to be enough to kill, so I, I kind of understand. Still racking up this damage. High stage control. Going deep. Maybe too deep? Wow. Using the Nair to actually pop Sheik back up above the stage after that vanish. Doesn't get a whole lot off of it, but he does manage to get stage control from it. And sometimes that's all you need. You know, Ryu already racking up almost 50% in the second stock. And you have, you have to wonder now, like, is is Fusix, like, are the aggressive options kind of, like, hurting him a lot? Because he does have needles. He, he doesn't seem to be, like, utilizing the needle camping quite that much. But still getting the conversion there. Needles to Bouncing Fish. Taking that first stock. The tried and true. See a quick smile there from Fusix after that down air was just slightly misspaced. Oh, wow. I'm surprised he didn't just go for the grab there. You see him do that a lot either. Empty hop, go straight for the grab bar, or tomahawk. One of Rio's trademarks. A lot of good defensive motion, motions from both players. The longest stall there as the, the pin met the bouncing fish. That's fine. way down. Doesn't want to get up there, but the that trap. Wow. Ooh, doesn't, doesn't go for the pin. But I like Scoops him up with a pivot grab. Actually, it's very surprising to see him miss that back there or that pin, as you mentioned. That's what I was expecting as well. Right, maybe uses chance for second life here. So he capitalizes. Forward throw into the double jump there. All right. Wow, it just calls out the trump. Like, yeah, you're not going to get it back there because you're too afraid I might kill you. Oh, great high vanish. Fusix has, has had really good defensive options. Oh, 11. 170? You rarely see a Sheik live to this percent. And oh, you did. does not live much <laughs> further. <laughs> you did. Jab, wow. jab. Rio ready for the grab there. Spot dodges and get a grab of his own to close it out against Fusix. Fusix facing a 2 0 hole right now. And it, it's been really good options from his Sheik so far. It's been very clean play. There hasn't been a lot of obvious mistakes. But we've just seen every time that Rio has had the answer. You know, he's been ready for it. You know, this is something, as you mentioned, this is something we've seen a long, long time between these two players. And maybe that matchup familiarity and maybe a little bit of that rust from time off from Fusix is just the difference. Ah, we will see here. This might be, Fast this is ball. his tournament life. Yeah. Fastball boys, down tilt, down tilt, down tilt, up tilt fair, and she is at 51%. Exactly. <laughs> what, 30% away from death? <laughs> yeah. Probably less. <laughs> That's so sad. You see that he's doing it. He's doing like the perfect pivot into shield. I don't know why that's more comfortable putting his D-pad as a uh, shield. Hey man, whatever works for you. You've made it this far with whatever setup you've got, and obviously it's working extremely well. Did Brawl have that, like where you can turn and change the control controller configuration? Alright. I feel like that's where like they, they did better as far as melee and um city four where you can kinda change the controls. Because it's, it's it allows you like more room to like customize it to your, you know, what fits you. Yeah, make make whatever you want yours. And just falling with multiple back airs there. Okay. Makes it safe with the needles. What the call out? Wow. Yeah. So it's, I mean, as, as we all saw, you know, we saw the up air after the down tilt, and it didn't look like it was going to connect. But unfortunately for Rio there, just jumping right into the final hits of it. Oh, there we go. Foot to set up. There goes the reset. But that's not uh, blank. Missing. Missing the conversion. Definitely wanted to get as much as he could off of that one. Down throw on that. Knows it's not quite an up throw percentage. But now it definitely is. 
cheek jab so quick there because you saw that Ryu was actually reaching out to finish that stock. And that jab interrupted and you got the rapid jab for sense too. Right. Oh, wow, beautiful spot dodge there. Again with the call out and the early kill at 56%. Oh my 56 god. 56%. Yeah. A game where rage is so big. Great way to utilize it there for Fusix. That was the highest of up airs too. What? That call out. That call out was unreal. And you would think like a player of Rio's caliber would have noticed like the situation. But unfortunately. And you see the smirk come out now from Fusix too. Both of them having a really good time. But he knows both of those stocks a little crazy. Yeah. Most definitely, especially 56, 56 percent. Yeah, corn, corn's not light either. You know that stock just kind of vanished. That rage doing chic all the justice right there. 139 percent, I believe. Yeah, so high, so high on the screen too. That bubble. Yeah, just a bad situation in general to be caught in. All right, we're running it back to down in city. Rio not afraid of this of this Three, stage pick. Two, one, go! We'll see if Fusic can recreate the magic that got him that game win. Or will Rio just advance back into loser semis? Oh. Wow, 17%. Alright, Rio playing a lot more cautious already. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more space to aerials and space movement from Rio. A lot of jump backs, too. All right, maybe going for call out of his own. Are oh, you about to get scratched? Okay, all right. Woo! Oh, that is so scary. The moment you you don't get that tech on that platform, dead even right now. I love the falling, the falling, uh, the falling near there from Rio. You know, and it's something he uh, utilizes across all of his characters. Just the back hit of the fair. You know what it allows him to really create from there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're definitely dead. That back there is so strong for Corrin. Definitely a, a good stock taking tool. If he's getting these straights hit right now though, he's gonna have to make sure he plays this super safe and he wants to close this out. I was just about to say, not doing great not taking any damage, but down air. Still hasn't taken too much, though. 24 is not a really a stretch. However, that quick change to 42 is very dangerous. No, I'm going to do it, but he's probably going to go for another one here. Ledge jump? No. What? Maybe trying to just do it off the ledge. Perhaps. Predicting the normal get up. He saw a jump coming from a mile away, but that bouncing fish on the pin in there. Great call out there for Fusix. Right now, trying to swing momentum back into his favor. Rio building this lead up a little bit further now. 58 to 15. Wow. Rio still searching for a hit here. Can't seem to land any solid hit. Just taking that first stop. Yeah, we. I mean, really, it's just been two pieces, you know, with one hit, two hits. I haven't seen a lot from like, the, the conversions you would expect. And Fusix is actually very close to taking this lead, too. Actually doing a wonderful job of trying to keep this set alive here, knowing that this could be all. All right, this will actually be the first time we've seen the lead this game for him. He almost had that call out, so he knew the jump was going to come there. That's such an interesting uh, rock, paper, scissors scenario when you see that jab two on shield from Sheik. Like, what? No, Corin, that was not great. What a, what a, what a way for that, that set to finish. Fastball just too far and wow. knew, that the, knew that the vanish wasn't going to carry him back up. What is up with these guys on stage today, man? We saw it earlier with Osprey kind of forward air into his day. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Dark times. Dark times. Wow. So, winners finals of Gatorland. <laughs>